All right, YouTube, it's Indiana primary predictions time. Now let's go to RCP and see if there's any new polling. The last few polls that they've showed have been pretty straightforward. Uh, I think we know what direction that this specific race is going in. On the Democratic side, that's not true, by the way. Uh, let's actually take a look at the Democratic side first and see what we can fucking figure out. Hmm, let's see, Indiana Democratic Party. We've got Marist and ARG as the most recent polls. Both show Clinton slightly ahead of 50% or at 50. She's been leading by 6.8. Um, Indiana, I would say there's a good 80% chance it goes Clinton. It's still close enough so Sanders could pull it off. It is open primary. So you could get independent voters coming in and uh, you know changing the results. Uh, you could have a last burst of Sanders support. We've seen this. We saw it in Michigan. Uh, the polls were completely and utterly wrong uh, in that state. He was actually slightly behind, ended up coming out ahead double digits. Uh, whether he can pull that off here or not, though, really doesn't matter at this point. Bernie Sanders is basically toast. He'd have to win basically every remaining delegate in order to actually get there. But he is promising a contested convention. That is that Sanders is not going to take losing sitting down, and he is going to be close enough to Clinton to make the claim, yeah, I should contest this and get some of these super delegates over on my side, in which case he could win. Is it likely? No, because the head of the DNC is, of course, a former Clinton campaign manager. But is it possible? In theory, yes. Uh, what I would worry about if I were a Sanders fan is that that would begin to look a bit like what has happened on the other side with Cruz and Kasich trying to use essentially convention rules and unpledged delegates to supplant someone who's clearly ahead, who's likely to hit the threshold of 1237. Anyway, you get someone who's clearly the leader, clearly has won more states, more votes, and everything else than everybody else combined, and yet gets it robbed from them. That wouldn't look good. That would cause a schism within the GOP, potentially. If on the other side the same thing were to happen, it would, however, be in favor of the underdog, the outside candidate, as opposed to the establishment candidate. This flips it around on its head. Now, are Clinton's fans angry enough and homogenized enough and stalwart enough in their support of Hillary uh, for reasons other than, well, she was inevitable or, well, yeah, it's her turn or something like that, some, some buzzword nonsense, uh, to actually leave the Democratic Party? I think the answer is, for Bernie Sanders fans, it would be kind of yes. Uh, there would be Sanders fans who would refuse to back her. On the other side, though, you haven't seen the sort of never Bernie thing. Uh, you may have some third wave feminists up there who would say, well, you know, she got robbed of it again, just like with Obama and now we have another white male candidate and they might begin to get kind of angry and they might stay home but would they would they defect to trump you know who's going to be the gop nominee not not really sanders fans might if he doesn't manage to get it on there uh he might also emerge as a vp uh, for hillary clinton in which case you have the general unification of the democratic party uh and i predict if sanders were to supplant her somehow which is you know it's like a one in a hundred chance at best he would probably pick her as VP, not because he wants to, but because he realizes it would unify the Democratic Party. It would be easier going forward. Uh, she would get to be vice, first uh, female vice president, at least, and it would sort of sew things up. She'd still be in a position. He would uh, Otherwise, he would certainly seek her endorsement actively, get her on his campaign, uh, reward her with some sort of position to keep her out of the line of fire with this indictment stuff with the FBI. Now, to the Republican side. The polling has been consistent. Uh, all of the recent polls show Trump ahead. It's just a matter of whether he's ahead by like two points or whether he's ahead by 15 or 17 points or whether he's somewhere in the middle at like eight or nine. Um, I like to think that the polls showing him ahead by the high, single, low, double digits are probably correct. He's probably going to win Indiana. If he wins by that margin, he, it's, it's, tech, it's technically a winner-take-all state, but it's also a winner-take-most. Will he cross the threshold to turn it into a winner-takes-all? It doesn't really matter. All Trump has to do is get more votes than his opponents in this state. He needs one more vote than Cruz is going to get in Indiana to essentially destroy the competition once and for all. They will no longer be able to counter him because it's a psychological victory, as I explained before. He doesn't need Indiana going forward to hit 1237, and he sure as hell doesn't need it to be the leader going into the convention because that's going to happen anyway. We already know it. He's got New Jersey. He's got West Virginia. The delegates he gets there means that Cruz could win all of the California delegates, which isn't going to happen. Every 
everything in the Pacific Northwest, Montana and Nebraska, as well as New Mexico, get all the delegates there, he'd still be a distant second. Uh, therefore, Trump is now going to go into the convention with by far a delegate lead. It's just a matter of does he hit 1237? I say it's very likely. Does he have a significant lead over his two main rivals combined? I say definitely. I, th I think that's assured. Um, so really, there's no way to stop him. I've said Indiana is irrelevant, but I would give about 90% odds. I'd say like a 90 to 10 that Trump wins Indiana based on this last round of polling. The one showing Cruz ahead by 15 appears to be an outlier. Um, because now it's being reported that Cruz's own internal polling shows him collapsing statewide, specifically because of his deal with Kasich, uh, possibly, ba possibly his basketball reference. Stranger things have happened. This is Indiana, let's face it. And Indiana's enjoying being relevant, I guess, for once, for something other than college sports. Uh, what you end up with is Cruz apparently took that seriously. I, I think it must be real because he left the state. If he was expecting to win and he saw it as truly pivotal to him even continuing to exist in the race, then you would expect him to be in Indiana right now. But he's not. He's in California. He's looking ahead because he's still hoping, against hope, to make enough headway there to stop Trump from hitting 1237, but the odds are not for him. The odds are heavily, heavily against him in Kasich. Their deal did not work. Picking Fiorina appears to have, as I said, actually hurt him, not help him uh, in the state of Indiana. The, the thing is, because of the psychological nature of this race, because mathematically it no longer matters, Psychologically speaking, if Trump racks up a win here, even if it's by a very small margin, he can say the Cruz campaign is dying or has already effectively died because he was up there before, he collapsed, his deal was bad, Kasich should get out of the race because it's no, I mean, what's the fucking point of him staying in? I think there's a very good chance Trump will win Indiana tomorrow. Now, is it assured? In some of the races, I've made an out-and-out -out prediction. For instance, Florida. I said Trump will win Florida. Uh, the odds are, are so in his favor that it's almost not even worth mentioning that you know hundredth of one percent chance that he loses. Or in, in a state like New Hampshire, or in a state like Nevada, where it was clear who was going to win, or, or even a state like Texas, where a lot of people thought Trump was going to pull off a win. I said, no, Cruz has the home field advantage. It won't be a stellar win, but he'll win anyway. That was back when the race was still fairly crowded. He only won with, what was it, 44 points, I think, whereas Trump won New York with more than 60%. I think that's telling. It doesn't just have to do with the thinning in the field. It has to do with how popular these people are in their home states. For a Republican, especially in New York, kind of tough. Uh, that actually says a lot, whereas Cruz... Uh, should have been in the 70s or 80s in his home state since it's a deep red state anyway, you would think, or at least somewhere in the upper 50s, and he wasn't. Uh, I think that there is a chance Cruz pulls this off, uh, but in order to formulate that, we have to assume that the fact that it's an open primary does not lead to a significant independent and business Democrat boost for Trump. And this is right in the part of the country where you would expect those to be significant, uh, you know, in, in this sort of zone, that's where the Reagan Democrats make their home, which is why I think that if Trump is the nominee, which I think it will be, uh, parts of the Great Lakes region and the upper Midwest region in that general area, we're talking Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, that haven't been in play before, will be in play. And states like Indiana and Ohio, which are kind of almost swing states now, will be more heavily red and really off the table for the Democrats. You Certainly a state like Missouri... Um, possibly making of inroads into parts of Illinois and, and lowering the advantage for the Democrats there. I think Trump would have a very good time in that region, especially if he chooses Kasich as a running mate, which would be, there are plenty of people he could choose that would be far worse than that. I think Rand Paul is probably the only other person he could pick that would be better uh, at this point than John Kasich, specifically because of Colorado and weed, Washington State, again, two swing states of import, um, you know, also the business Democrat regions, I think they would appreciate Ron Paul's message, especially on stuff like drugs. Uh, although I believe he just went full retard and called for a repeal of a century of antitrust laws. 
So he's looking more like a Koch brother now than a leans libertarian figure within the grassroots Republican Party. It's actually kind of sad to see because he's got the right idea on almost everything else. Um, so, yeah, I think Trump's got a significant advantage here. It's not certain. I can't make an out and out statement of, yes, he's all, he's got it in the bag because there are polls that showed Cruz ahead or nearly tied. And if those are not the outliers, Cruz will win. The difference is we've got more polls showing Trump ahead by the single or even low du or mid double digits. I'm going to trust them more because there are more of them. The overall sample is far larger. It's like four to one in the polling as far as which polls have showed Trump ahead by at least some substantial margin. Again, added to this, the fact that Cruz appears to be losing steam right now, whereas Trump is rising in support right now nationally. You look at the polling nationally, and that's fairly clear. He's the one with the advantage here, not Ted Cruz. But that's not certain. So I can't make a definitive prediction here other than to say I'd give 90% chance to Trump. I'd put 10 cents on on Cruz and zero on Kasich. He's got no chance. Kasich might be in the single digits right now in the state of Indiana. He's suffering actually more than Cruz. Uh, that's actually a little bit odd to me. Uh, I, I, I thought that Cruz's fans that cared about electability would primarily be the ones abandoning for Trump. Instead, it appears to have been Kasich's fans who were concerned about honesty, uh, specifically because of this bad deal that they tried to make. Well, that's great for Trump because none of those people are going to go over to the Cruz camp because what pissed them off was the collusion between their candidate formerly and Cruz. Well, they're just as pissed off at him as they are at Kasich. They see them as dishonest. So you got two or three percent of the voting population that primarily cares about honesty and was primarily on Kasich's ticket abandoning him. He can't win a state, no, nothing. He won't win any states. He'll be hard pressed to come in second in the, the remaining states. He won't get any more delegates, which means he's dead in the water, uh, or very few delegates, one or two you know, here and there. He won't break 200. I think he's below 200 right now. Um, he'll be below Rubio levels, which is actually funny because then all Trump has to do, if he comes like one, one delegate short, all he has to do is call up little Marco and say, hey, how would you like to be VP? or Secretary of State or something like that. How would you like to be an ambassador uh, to ambassador to Cuba or something like that? He'd probably take the job. Offer him something like that, grab up most of his delegates. We've still got unpledged delegates. The idea that every unpledged delegate is an anti-Trump delegate, I, I don't think that that quite flies. So I, don't, I think Trump's got a buffer of about 50 unpledged delegates anyway. Uh, and even even that small minority of the unpledged delegates will get him over that threshold. But if there was any problem, of course, uh, there wouldn't be a problem very long because all he'd need is maybe a few dozen of them. But again, California is the big gem coming up. As far as Indiana, Clinton has an advantage. Trump has a, perhaps a slightly larger advantage than Clinton has. Um, I, I think that because of the momentum involved, because we've actually got decent polling. I mean, if I look at this, Indiana for the GOP. I'll, I'll read out a couple of these in the last round of polling. We've got Gravis. It's got Trump at 44, Cruz at 27. Um, NBC News Marist has Trump at 49, Cruz at 34. ARG has Trump at 41, Cruz at 32. Importantly, I, I said this before, take a look at the recent polling. Has Cruz in any of these polls gotten to a number? Take Cruz's highest number on here, which is a 35, match it up against Trump's lowest, which is a 37. And we find out he's at least two points ahead under the most optimistic recent polling scenario for Cruz. That's going all the way back to the 21st of April. That's a decent number of polls here. In none of them is anyone other than Trump leading. Uh, the Cruz poll showing him ahead appears to have been taken off of here, probably because there was unreliable methodology behind it. If, if it's any good at all, it gets put on RCP. Here, though, Trump's at least ahead by a couple points. It's an open primary, and he's got a tailwind. Um, therefore, there's a good chance. Nate Silver, by the way, uh, is now projecting that Trump's got a significant advantage, even in the polls plus forecast. And this is weighted against Trump. It's weighted in favor of Cruz in any state because he's got the most endorsements. He got endorsed by the governor. That doesn't appear to have helped him. Neither did Fiorina, neither did this deal. In fact, it appears to have buffed up Trump's numbers several points as people gravitated away from Kasich and are voting for him out of spite. Uh, they're not voting for Ted Cruz. So yeah, there you've got it on the Indiana primary. I think Clinton's got an advantage and Trump's got an advantage. In neither case is it certain 
but it's far more likely uh, than the other results. And again, if Trump wins, even by a vote, the race is over on the GOP side. Not only has he secured the nomination, uh, Ted Cruz and, and John Kasich will both begin to crumble away. And before the next few states are up for voting, like West Virginia, you'll see uh, their campaigns will basically be dead. You could see one or both of them drop out before then and call for party unity and try sucking Trump's cock behind the scenes. I don't expect that, but you, you could see that happen. I think it's too much to hope for Cruz dropping out. I think he wants to at least go to the convention. I think he'll have a grand old time. Maybe he'll bring a couple cows made out of butter there and everyone will have a fucking retarded orgy or something. That's sort of what Ted Cruz is into. That's about all. Peace out.